We've been back aboard Jandina again with Andrew Morgan on a trip where we enjoyed beautiful anchorages, some great sailing, stunning scenery, gentle downwind summer sailing and some visitors who put on a show for us. All this when sailing in the west coast of Scotland. We met up with Jandina and Andrew in Malaig, a lovely working port on the west coast of Scotland. We joined Andrew for what is one segment of his trip from his home port of Dover right round the British Isles, a trip that will take him around three months. We set out from Malaig on a calm morning, heading for the Isle of Canna. We went north of Egg and had some great upwind sailing, tacking between the islands of Skye and Rum. The clouds gave us some rain. But it was clearing as we approached Canna and the anchorage in Canna Harbour, where we anchored along with some other yachts. We took the dinghy in to go for a walk and explore some of this sparsely populated island. A classic sailing vessel came in and moored up on the quay and another one gracefully sailed into the harbour and anchored behind us. A peaceful morning as we left Canna with the mist clinging to rum as we sail past its northern and western coasts. Slowly, the sun came through and we were able to get a gentle sail downwind with the asymmetric. We then had some visitors who bought on a great show for us.
we were soon entering the Sound of Mull, heading for Tobermory. We entered the harbour and moored at the marina and then had a walk around the town that's famous for its many TV appearances and also its famous distillery. And since you asked, yes we did, it would have been rude not to. It was again lovely and calm in the morning as we gently tacked our way down the sound of mud. The clouds in the distance did look a little threatening though. It did rain, the rain had cleared as we followed the ferry for a lunch stop into Loch Ailey. It rained heavily after lunch as we continued our journey towards Open. On the approach to Oban we had to make way for a ferry before we continued on to Kerrera Marina on the island opposite Oban. We took a water taxi into Oban to do some shopping, sightseeing and watching the array of craft entering the harbour before getting the water taxi back to Kerrera. We had another calm morning where we gently sailed south to Proladobain Anchorage where we would spend some time waiting for the tide for us to safely pass through the Q and Sound later in the afternoon. Another delightful anchorage in lovely surroundings. Just over the hill is Clacken and the famous Clacken Bridge. It's also known as the Atlantic Bridge. We entered Kewan Sound at high water, but you could still see the whirlpools and the turbulence that can catch you out if you're here at the wrong tide time. We were soon approaching our next stop, Crove and Crove Marina. Groove is a recently built marina and village set in a gorgeous location.
due to the forecast of bad weather, we stayed at Crewe for two days and used the time to walk over the hills to Ardfern. We popped into Ardfern Marina before walking to the end of Loch Craig Nish and then back to Crewe. Next morning, Andrew brought Jandina alongside the fuel jetty so she could be topped up with diesel. We were soon making our way down the Sound of Jura. We had wind and tide with us and we were touching 10 knots at times. As we circled around the headland of the island of Dana, we had some turbulence, even though it was a slack tide at the time. We headed up the quiet Loch Sween, heading for Tevalik. As we reached the entrance of Tevalik, we had a squall, but thankfully this had eased by the time we picked up a visitor's boy in the harbour. Another delightful setting, and then we had a piece of history join us, a steam powered Clyde Puffer. Vic 32, one of the last still working, be it carrying tourists now. The Clyde Puffer was firing up its boiler as we left Tevalik the next morning. We had a gentle sail back down Loch Sween and onto the Sound of Gia as we headed for the anchorage in Adminish Bay on Gia. It's a great anchorage and a great place to have a beer in the boathouse on a pleasant summer's day. We walk down the coastal path which had an abundance of crocosmia at the edges. We made our way along the woodland path to see the gardens at Ackermore House. As the island's virtually frost free all year round, it holds a wide variety of plants and it's a delightful place to visit. Another gentle start as we headed down the west side of Kintyre Peninsula, leaving Isla behind us to port. It 
was still gentle as we went through the Mulla Kintyre and then headed up the east side of the Kintyre Peninsula. Some nice wind gave us a good passage, and we had the occasional yacht passing us, reminding us we weren't on our own. We were soon entering Campbelltown Lock and heading down into Campbelltown Marina. Another pleasant morning as we went out to Campbelltown Lock and headed north towards Loch Fine, in between Kintyre and Arran. good winds and a little rain, for as we entered Loch Fine and turned into East Loch Tarbert, it was a beautiful evening as we moored at the marina. It was another glorious morning as we set off from Tarbert, heading for True. The Firth of Clyde gave us light winds and we had a gentle downwind sail. passing fishing boat reminded us to look out for pots as we'd have to do for the whole of the trip. We lost wind and so we motored to True, where our part of the trip would end and Andrew would continue on with new crew. Sailing in Scotland had been a great experience. 